The Biden campaign is telling reporters to stop covering that Biden's prosecuting Trump and cover the controversial things Donald says instead. The Biden campaign wants to prosecute Trump in the dark this year. Some very powerful people are watching this and they've had enough. The Obamas say Joe Biden's going to lose. So they're staging a hostile takeover. Obama world is telling everyone who will listen in Washington that the Biden campaign is complacent, unimaginative. And they don't understand the threat of losing to Trump. Team Biden says Biden is way too zen. I think when he says way too zen, he means barely alive. But I don't want to put words in the former president's mouth. The Washington Post is reporting Obama has been visiting Biden at the White House to tell him he needs a full overhaul of his campaign. Obama is pushing Biden to move his political operation outside of and beyond his White House advisors. Translation, Barack and Michelle are taking over. And the media agrees. President Biden needs to listen. He needs to ramp up the attacks. He did yesterday. He needs to stop running ads that say, I did a great job, and start running ads saying this guy is a threat. Democracy, to your abortion rights, to your Social Security, everything has to be Trump. Everything. I have a seven-step plan for Biden's re-election. And I, I, you can memorize them because I did them in alphabetical order. Attack, 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 attack. Biden's trying to throw Trump in prison for the rest of his life, strip his business license, strip him off the ballot, and just call him a combination of Hitler and King George III. And the Obamas think he should go on the attack? I'm afraid to ask what this new level of attack would look like. But if Trump isn't damaged goods by the convention... Michelle Obama's positioning herself as Plan B. I am President. I'm going to tell you what people need, huh? People need money. Lots and lots of money. That's right. We're going to print so much damn money. I'm going to give every single American one million dollars. And then... We gon' have a big ass party with all us millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> that one I have seen before and it never gets old. Today is Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. Democrats panic about Donald Trump. Beating Biden almost assuredly at this point. There are there is no data. That says that Joe Biden can even come close to winning. And so now it's time for the backup squad. They're sending in Michelle Fanny Willis, accused of hiring a man she had a romantic relationship with to prosecute Donald Trump. That is falling to pieces. And Marjorie Taylor Greene joins the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Stay connected. This week, we are going to have multiple debates. We're going to be covering live tomorrow night the debates. We're going to see a Hunter Biden uh, contempt of Congress charge get hit with tomorrow in a hearing. They're going to vote on it. It's going to go to the floor. It's going to pass. We're pretty sure we've heard that. And so there's going to be major breaking news all throughout 2024. Keep your head on a swivel and stay connected with us. Use Patriot Mobile, ladies and gentlemen. When I say they are the only Christian conservative network that you can trust on and rely on for your free speech, I mean it. We use it at our company. We travel all over the country. Patriot Mobile is the network that keeps us connected. It's very, very important for us. Please do not fund the left. Fund Christian conservatives who believe in free speech. Switch to Patriot Mobile today and send a message. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Benny or call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation when you use the offer code Benny, B-E-N-N-Y. Join me today, patriotmobile.com slash Benny. Patriotmobile.com slash Benny. So... If you were wired in, and if you were paying attention, which is really our superpower on this program, we are noticers. That's it. That's about it. Don't particularly um, claim to be super high intelligence. I don't claim to be born with some type of like genius level IQ. We are simply noticers. Pattern recognition is our superpower, and that is what we do. It makes us good at social media. It makes us good at figuring out algorithms. It makes us good at uh, effectively pulling forward uh, the greater overall pattern for what's happening. And if you see the patterns, you can connect them and you can figure out what Jeffrey Epstein's island was all about. You can figure out how the Bidens were able to game the system. And you can go back to the nexus point at which Biden Inc. began. Biden Inc. was started when Joe Biden 
decided to not run for president. So the Biden crime family uh, was not something that has been taking place for 20, 30 years. There's no evidence that Joe Biden has been grifting for that long. Joe Biden was a senator for that long. Obviously, he, had, he has dirtball family members. They were all like between, they, they're all like going through relative levels of impoverished up until a very specific point. There's a very specific point that was a massive windfall for the Biden family. And what was that point? That point was when Joe Biden decided not to run for president. This was in the year approximately 2014, and they were ramping up, obviously, for Obama's successor. Democrats had just won two pretty resounding uh, presidential elections against other Democrats, right? Mitt Romney, Democrat, John McCain, Democrat. These are fake candidates. They weren't Republicans. There wasn't a Republican party. There wasn't an actual opposition party. And so Barack Obama was whistling Dixie, right? He was sitting really pretty. Yeah, they'd lost a bunch of elections. Yes, the Republicans had the Senate and the House, but who the hell cares, right? The executive power has amassed so much uh, overwhelming Orwellian style power that the chief executive is really all that you need to effectively muscle in the kind of change that you want in this nation. And so as long as they were able to retain that, as long as they were able to anoint Hillary Clinton, then it was easy. But if Joe Biden jumped in, then you'd have a really bloody, very messy primary. I mean, you already did with Bernie Sanders of all people. Bernie Sanders beating Hillary Clinton in multiple states. Bernie Sanders uh, effectively winning in 2020 until they decided to give him another beach house, right? And Bernie Sanders then dropped off. Here, Bernie, here's another, you, you hate capitalism so much, here's another beach house and here's a book deal and go away, bye-bye. Oh, okay, thank you. So, well, like, they've been able to effectively rig the system. And how do they do that? They get rid of all the people that could potentially run against them. And they thought that Donald Trump was a joke. They, they thought that they had it in the bag. And they got Hillary Clinton to run effectively unopposed, right, in 2016. Now, how do they do that? Because Joe Biden would have certainly mounted a campaign against, I mean, Joe Biden was vice president at the time. Joe Biden had a relatively less seedy past, which is kind of wild, but it's true, right? Like, a far, Joe Biden had far less foilables in his past than Hillary Clinton had. Hillary Clinton has had a massive bombshell scandal. I mean, every year of her life, since the beginning of her political life in like the 80s, there have been crime after crime after scandal after scandal that have dogged them. I mean, she was a burdened candidate. And so getting Joe Biden to drop out was really important. And how do you do that? Well, you tell old Joe, and Joe was really old, at the time that he dropped off, uh, ALX, could you find me that? Could you find me that um, funny Robin Williams clip, like dunking on Joe Biden while he was vice president? It is worth. I think it's worth noting, like that that Robin Williams, who I consider possibly the greatest comedian who ever lived, uh, Robin Williams was going hard at Joe Biden, like uh, hard at Joe Biden for having dementia while Joe Biden was vice president. The clip I'm about to show you is like a decade old. Okay, so. There was this moment where the Biden crime family took off. And this was the moment that Joe Biden decided to not run for president. He decided, and Obama decided years ago, a decade ago, 2024, 2014, a decade ago that Joe Biden had too much dementia to run for president, that Joe Biden was too unfit for office. And Obama was able to like wrestle and was able to backbend and twist his arm enough to say, I'm not going to run. Joe Biden's dream has always been to run for president. He's run for president for decades. Joe Biden started running for president in the 1980s. Joe Biden loves him some Joe Biden. And so this created a major war. And how were they able to get Joe Biden to not run? They promised him the pretty plump plums of Ukraine and China, knowing that Joe Biden would effectively set up a Clinton Foundation style operation where they could go and do deals inside of these countries make tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Hunter Biden was given an account with billions of dollars in it by the Chinese to invest. The interest on that account, the fees on the, the points on managing those accounts was worth hundreds of millions of dollars, right? So that you could just go get rich forever. Joe, here's how you cement your family's legacy forever. Here's how you make sure that all your kids and all your grandkids, even the illegitimate runs are good for life, right? Don't run for president. Take all these pretty little plums that I can give you. And that's actually when Joe Biden was handed the folders and the files to manage China. Remember, Joe Biden was in charge of policy with China. And his 
family just swoops in like parasites, like rats on a corpse. They just run in to like gobble up that money. That's when Hunter Biden started flying on the plane. 2014 is the year that they started doing the trips to Ukraine and the trips to China. And Joe Biden began to muscle in the kind of policies that would get his family rich. This was the payoff. This was the scarlet letter. This was the cloak and the dagger. This was how it worked. And then they were able to effectively anoint Hillary Clinton as the successor to Barack Obama. And the idea there would be, we got the first black president, we got the first woman president, and there we go, right? The Democratic Party is now uh, the entire the party of women, the party of all minorities, the coalition of the dispossessed, and we'll be able to effectively destroy the country clubs forever, right, in this country. And we'll be able to set the, you know, the Republican Party is already 20 years behind, we'll be able to set these idiots back another 40 years, right? That was the plan. And an, an important reminder of how stupid Joe Biden was and how dumb he was even 10 years ago. So dumb that Barack Obama said, you can't run the country. And so dumb that the greatest comedian of our time said this. You don't have it yet. No, okay. Yeah, have a- wow. Very, very rare. Very rare that we are very rare that we are uh, that, that we were. We, okay. I'm seeing the chat now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here is, we're getting the clip. I see it sending right now. Here is Joe Biden on the date. Is this, is this one? Okay. All right. Never. Okay. We're, we got F bombs in the clip. Okay. So here's the problem. Robin Williams was swearing. Robin Williams was swearing in the clip. My, my team is trying to bleep it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do we got it? Royce, let's go. Yeah, go, 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 go. Why not? Why not just give it a second? Here we go. The boys are typically faster than this, but that's all right. We will wait patiently. And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Robin Williams on Joe Biden, this clip from 2014. This is how dumb for this is how long Joe Biden has been dumb. Watch. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That was a clip from Robin Williams in 2013, actually. 2013? So over a decade ago, Robin Williams is making jokes about how Joe Biden can't talk and can't speak and is unfit for office. And then Barack Obama, of course, knowing this, having worked with Joe Biden and having said, don't never underestimate Joe Biden's ability to F things up, which is an exact Obama quote. It's been printed. We got that article. There we go. Barack Obama has privately voiced concerns that Joe Biden could F things up, according to reports. We knew this because Joe Biden was forced to walk out on stage and humiliatingly declare with Barack Obama by his side, almost like his nursing home handler, that he is not fit for office. This happened in 2015. It is a remarkable clip from the archives. Enjoy. Uh, I've said all along, what I've said time and again to others, uh, that it may very well be that that process, uh, uh, by the time we get through it, uh, closes the window on mounting a realistic campaign uh, for president, that it might close. I've concluded it has closed. Remember, these people are communists. That was a struggle session. Joe Biden, for the crime of wanting to run for president, had to be trotted out by Barack Obama and humiliated. This was in 2015. Joe Biden saying, I don't have the capacity to run for president. I don't have what it takes. I've decided that window for me to run for president in my life, not this year, in my life is over. (laughs) Yeah. Who wants to be president forever. Well, only a megalomaniacal sociopath, but that's exactly who we have in Barack Obama. Now we're going to get into Barack Obama meddling into the O'Biden regime, which is what we're living through right now. Joe Biden, you almost feel sorry for him in like a deeply pathetic way. He's not president and he's never been president. Actually, it's become quite clear. And if you actually do the noticing, as we do on this program, it's our only superpower. If you're doing the noticing, 
we are noticing that Barack Obama has been telling us for years what he's about to do with Joe. In fact, he's been using Joe as a Muppet, much like he used him in that clip, been pawning Joe off and using him as just a useful jackass for so long, it's been embarrassing for him. Obama's calling the shots. Obama told us what he was about to do to Joe Biden in 2016 in one of his uh, coronation interviews when Barack Obama was leaving office and he was doing these rounds of interviews with not serious journalists, but like comedians. And Barack Obama was doing his victory lap, right? He had anointed Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was up by 200,000 in the polls, right? He was never gonna, he was never gonna have a President Trump, obviously, ha, ha, ha. Barack Obama, give me that Barack Obama, at least I will be president, right? Like, at least I, at least you will, you know, at least I will be a president from, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel's show. Oh man, he was so arrogant. Pride cometh before destruction. In a telling, in a telling moment, Barack Obama decided to let one slip and decided to tell Stephen Colbert what his plan was for Joe Biden. Ladies and gentlemen, he said so in plain English, what he was planning on doing if he ever had to with Joe. If you noticed, you noticed. Here it is. What you know now, do you wish like you had a, sec a, a third term? You know what, if, if I could make an arrangement where um, I had a I had a, a stand in a front man or front woman and, and they had an earpiece in and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff and then I could sort of deliver the lines. But somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony. Uh, I, I'd be fine with it. If I could just deliver the lines and somebody else was able to be president and I was able to whisper in their ear from my basement in my sweatpants. That's how confident Barack Obama was that he would be president forever. And Barack Obama is in part living out that dream. We stole that dream from him for four years. Okay. And now Barack Obama gets to live out the dream of what he just said on Stephen Colbert's show. Right when he was leaving office, somebody else is going to be president. Somebody else is going to do all the stupid ceremonies. That person has to be an idiot, has to be a Manchurian candidate. They have to be stupid. They have to be, they have to be willing to debase and degrade themselves enough to do that. And obviously that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get that with Hillary who owes the rest of her political career to me. I'm going to get that with Joe Biden and we're just going to maybe run them all back to back. And I'm just going to be president forever. You could tell the cocky, I mean, you could tell the attitude of this guy, this smug a-hole, you can tell it, you can see it, right? If you notice, and if you know where to look, you can find the nuggets of like Barack Obama's mindset and brain state right at the eve of the election in 2016. Watch. President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. Oh, 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 yeah, you won't ever be president. We've wired, we've wired it so that you will never be president. That's what Barack Obama was saying. Little did they understand outside of their hermetically sealed bubbles, how unpopular the regime was, how unpopular they were, how despised they were amongst the American people and what pains they would have to go through, how humiliating, degrading the process would be to try and claw back power after Donald Trump and you and I took it from them rightfully because they are despicable and they do not deserve power. Ladies and gentlemen, after installing Joe Biden in office, Barack Obama began the practice of publicly humiliating him again. Now, I have some really great reporting I'm going to read to you about how the White House actually works. The White House is staffed from stem to stern with o hardened Obama apparatchiks and loyalists. I mean, Mao's color revolution, Mao's red revolution, great leap forward, it didn't have 
the kind of acolytes and the kind of like hardened blind cultists that the Joe Biden regime has in favor of Barack Obama. Every person, it's effectively like every person on the Obama team in the Obama White House just took a four year pause and then went right back into their roles. They just did a switcheroo where Obama was able to get what he wanted. He was able to get the idiot standing in his place. Now, to show you how this works, I mean, we're setting this up to a big point because right now Barack Obama is forcefully and muscularly claiming back his presidency. It is the Obama presidency, third term. These people, they don't care about laws. They don't care about norms. They don't care that it's illegal to do this. It is Barack Obama's third term. The evidence of that is proven in perfect distillation. When Joe Biden and Barack Obama are at the White House together. I'm going to show you a clip. It's one of my favorites of reporting of what happens when Joe Biden and Barack Obama, the real president of the United States, go to the White House together. You know, it's amazing. Like words lie, but images, pictures, and especially video don't lie. This is why they're so scared about the Epstein documents coming out and the photos and the pictures coming out. And we found out yesterday that allegedly there's video of Bill Clinton and video of Prince Andrew and so forth. The word words can lie and often do. Video and photos don't. This is why the Hunter Biden laptop is so, so devastating to the regime. This is why the Epstein files are so devastating. And this is why video like this is so devastating for those who think that Joe Biden's actually president. Watch. Joe Biden is now the most unpopular person in virtually any room he enters. If you doubt it, watch this. This was the scene at the White House today. Take a careful look at this. You've never seen anything like it. That's the president of the United States in his own house, shunned. Nobody would talk to him. So Biden wandered off looking vacant as a crowd formed around a former president, Barack Obama, who was obviously deeply grateful for the attention. And then it got worse. It got much more poignant than that. Watch Biden try to horn in on the conversation swirling around Obama. Everyone involved in that conversation, including Kamala Harris, who supposedly works for Biden, ignored Biden completely. Biden desperately tried to get Obama's attention. He puts his hand on Obama's shoulder. He even calls him Barack, like they're friends. But Obama blows him off. He acts like Biden's not even there. It's so unbelievably cruel. I don't feel bad for Joe Biden. Um, God will be people's judge, right? So it's not really my job. But on a human level, uh, what they've done to this man, and by they, I mean Barack Obama. I also mean Jill Biden, right? His his wife, who he of course committed adul adultery with, and 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 broke up multiple marriages with, and and she was the babysitter, right? And destroyed their family. They live with that curse. They'll live with that curse for life. But Jill Biden also allowing her husband to go through this degrading process, this humiliation, the debasement of Joe Biden, like he actually frankly deserves better. And what do I mean by that? A retirement home. He deserves like actually sit on the, you know, cold beaches of Delaware and like throw the ball for the dog. He doesn't deserve this. Like he does deserve to just kind of disappear off into the mist. That was the right decision in 2015, 10 years ago. I've decided that I won't ever run for president again. That's what they forced Joe Biden to do. They drudged him back up from the crypt that he was living in because they needed the idiot, the useful moron, the sack of barely alive bones to slap around and at LARP as a president. And it's so degrading, actually. I don't feel bad for Joe Biden, but kind of maybe because everyone in his life has betrayed him. His wife has betrayed him. Dr. Jill, what are you a doctor of? Joe Biden clearly needs a doctor. What are you a doctor of, Jill? Education. OK, where do you teach? I'm a teacher. Where? I don't know. Can I sign up for your class? No idea. Don't know. These people are frauds. They've always been frauds. 
and they're an embar they're degrading. They're deg it's degrading. It's humiliating. It's it's borderline inhuman what they've done to the man. Check this out. From Tablet Magazine, David Garrow, who is a left wing biographer and a man who is not some type of like MAGA supporter. He's actually the, the authoritative Obama biographer who sat down and did this just wild interview, long form interview with Tablet Magazine, where he went through and exposed exactly how the White House operates. It's worth reading because it's the best reported, most thought out, most exceptional uh, uh, thesis as to how Barack Obama functions and who Barack Obama is. David Garrow with a blistering attack on who's actually in charge in Washington, D.C. And before I continue, I must reiterate, this man is Barack Obama's hand-picked biographer. This is the man that was chosen by Michelle and Barack to tell their story. And here's the story they want told. The election of Joe Biden in 2020 gave Obama even more reason to stay in Washington, D.C. The whispers about Biden's cognitive decline, which began during the bizarre COVID sheltered basement campaign, were mostly dismissed by part as partisan impacts on the politicians who had always been gaff ridden. Yet as President Biden continued to fall off bicycles, misremember basic facts and mix long and increasingly weird passages of data esque nonsense with autobiographical whoppers during his public appearances, it became hard not to wonder how poor the president's capacities really were and who was actually making the decisions at the White House staff top to bottom with Obama loyalists. When Obama turned up at the White House, staffers and press crowded around him, leaving President Biden talking to the drapes, which is not a metaphor, but a thing that really happened. That Obama might enjoy serving a third term as president in all but name, running the government from his iPhone, was thought was a thought expressed by Paul Obama himself before he left office in the interview that we played you. Instead, every few months, a sanitized report, and this is talking about how the press, like this is how the, how the press is massaging this, the press uh, allow for Obama to hit the headlines with some type of outside public advocacy, which conveniently elides the problem that are inherent in having a person with no constitutional role or congressional oversight take an active role in the executive decision-making. My God, this is just absolutely bombshell stuff. Near the end of June, for example, Politico ran a long article noting that Biden's cognitive decline with the coy headline, is Obama ready to reassert himself? As if president, as if the ex-president hadn't been living in the middle of Washington, D.C. and playing politics since the day he left office. Indeed, in previous weeks, Obama had continued his role as a central advocate for government censorship of the internet while launching a new campaign against gun ownership, claiming it historically linked to racism. Surely the spectacle of an ex-president simultaneously leading campaigns against both the First and Second Amendment might have led to spectacularly incurious old D.C. school reporters to file a story on the nuts and bolts of Obama's political operation, but the D.C. press were no longer interested in the business of maintaining transparency. Instead, they have become servants of power whose job was to broadcast whatever myths helped advance the interests of the powerful. This is the interpretation of Obama's role in the Biden White House. And this, ladies and gentlemen, sets us up really nicely for what is happening today. Because what is happening today is, and here, is the, uh, here are the real clear politics averages, what is happening today is Joe Biden is losing, not by a little, by a lot. Joe Biden is losing in every poll. Joe Biden is losing in every swing state. Joe Biden's favorability is down to 30% in the must-win state of Pennsylvania. Joe Biden is collapsing beyond the capacity to fix in eight short months between now and the November election, his campaign. There is nothing that can happen that can save Joe Biden. And so Joe Biden must be done away with. Perhaps this was the plan all along. We're not exactly sure. There's great panic that is happening right now in the Obama administration because Obama is attempting to protect what he has long bragged about, the Manchurian candidate presidency that he has installed in the White House. The Daily Mail, how Obama held secret lunch meetings with Biden in December to urge him to be more aggressive as he fears Trump is more formidable than the president realizes. Apparently, according to the Washington Post, Obama was yelling at Joe Biden in the White House 
Obama recently had an off the books White House lunch with Joe Biden to share his concerns and advice with his former running mate's campaign, meaning this is the uh, real president meeting with the fake president. Obama grew animated. Animated is such a perfect word for Obama is losing his mind and yelling and screaming. As he discussed the 2024 election, Donald Trump's bid to return to the presidency and suggest that Biden should restructure his campaign to be more agile. Lunch meeting was reportedly occurred in recent months, but has been previously had been previously reported, and Obama does not appear in the White House visitor logs. Oh, that's very interesting. Why would they try and hide the fact that Barack Obama is going to the White House? Because it's a nightmare. Because what's happening isn't meant to happen. Have you ever seen? Uh, did you ever see like George Bush? I mean, it, like it'd be hard to actually figure out like the a metaphor for this in the, the general era, but like, I don't know, Ronald Reagan marching into the George H.W. Bush White House, which was of course a disaster. And like screaming at him, that didn't happen. This didn't happen with Clinton and Bush or Bush or Trump, where the president comes in to like demand how they run a campaign. Barack Obama is the president, ladies and gentlemen. And NBC all but admits it. Watch. As President Biden ramps up his general election campaign, there are new warning signs. The Washington Post reporting former President Obama has raised questions about the structure of President Biden's re-election campaign. Two sources confirmed to NBC News that Obama and Biden met over lunch in December and discussed the campaign, with Obama expressing deep concern about Mr. Trump's political strength. Underscoring the urgency, one source telling me this is an all-hands-on-deck moment. Hmm, all-hands-on-deck. But why are those hands including Joe Biden and Barack Obama? because this is simply a continuation. Why is Obama's hands in this at all? NBC News, all hands on deck. Hmm, interesting. CNN, in a shocking moment of clairvoyance, saying, a reminder, these two hate each other. Like a reminder, they don't like each other. Barack Obama didn't want Joe Biden to run a decade ago. What will happen here? I mean, it, how important is it? Because that kind of was the strategy of Obama. And he's essentially urging Biden to follow a similar framework uh, in order to be reelected because he's very concerned about uh, Trump's stronghold uh, on the GOP. Yeah, it's fascinating reporting, especially, you know, they are friendly and, and uh, Biden does consult him for advice. But the fact is that Obama brought this up months ago and nothing has really changed. So there's also a little bit of uh, a competition between these two. There always has been. It's very typical, the president VP relationship. And that's why, you know, Biden, Biden always remembers back in 2015, 2016, where all of Obama's allies and Obama himself really dissuaded him from running for president back then. So sometimes Barack Obama's advice to Joe Biden is sort of met with a bit of defensiveness, not just by President Biden, but the people around him who sometimes think that Obama has never completely appreciated President Biden's skills. Now, so what is Barack Obama's advice? Barack Obama's advice is Donald Trump's going to kick your ass. So you need to kick harder. And of course, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing all these Hitlerian speeches of Joe Biden, right? My, my, <laughs> blood red, blood red background. Can we get that? Can we get that image? The black blood red background with like the red insignias and the military flanking him and Joe Biden going. And what is he saying? My opponent is Hitler. <laughs> it's too good. Yes. Oh, you convinced us. You're exactly right, sir. Yes, precisely. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't, it doesn't work and it won't work. They've done everything they can to Donald Trump. They've thrown it all at him. What are you gonna what are you gonna do? What what are you gonna do? What more can you possibly do? That's why everyone's talking about assassination, honestly. It's terrifying. Pray for Donald Trump. Because they're running out, they're running out of options, obviously. CNN saying, like, how much harder can you hit Trump? You're trying to put him in jail for 400 years. According to the Washington Post, Obama, President, former President Obama had a private lunch uh, with President Biden where he said that the president's campaign needs to be 
uh, empowered to make decisions without clearing them with the White House. I think he also has advocated that uh, Biden sort of ramp up the rhetoric a little bit when it comes to Trump's threat to democracy, which is what he did mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. So maybe the president is listening to his, his former boss. What did you think about all that? Uh, I agreed with everything that came out of the Obama camp. Uh, President Obama, he, he knows something about winning yeah. an election in this country, okay? And, well, your folks did, too, back in the Clinton and, days. And, yeah. and, and I, I, I hope and I believe, you're right, we're seeing a, a course correction. Um, I, I hate that it leaked as a former White House aide. I know journalists love this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I believe me, the Obama people and the Biden people, the one thing they agree on that right now is they're angry that that story ran. But I'm sure it's well reported. I'm sure it's accurate, yeah. right? But this is, so this is the tension between um, my old side of the line and, and yours. Sure, sure. But President Biden needs to listen. He needs to ramp up the attacks. He did yesterday. He needs to stop running ads that say, I did a great job, and start running ads saying this guy is a threat. Democracy, to your abortion rights, to your Social Security. Everything has to be Trump. Everything. I have a seven-step plan for Biden's reelection, and I, I, you can memorize them because I did them in alphabetical order. Attack, 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 attack. <laughs> <laughs> Love a small panic in the morning. Panic. We too, we often run headlines that say panic in DC. That's the clip that proves there's panic in DC. You can't you can't run a election in America. And I'm talking about 200 years of electoral politics here, history. You cannot run an election in America where both guys are running on the record and their vision. It just doesn't happen. Okay. The, not my rules. I kind of wish it was like that, quite frankly. I kind of wish it was more about like, what am I going to do for the country? Ask not what you can do your country. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I wish it was like that Kennedy ask style of like, like servant nature to our nation and um, all the things that make this place great and how we can make it better. Nope. Not how it works. In every election, there is one candidate that is running on their record and another candidate that is attacking the record. So here's what they're trying to set up. This is the ball game they're trying to pitch here. They're trying to pitch ball game like fast and inside where even though Joe Biden has been president resident for four years and we suffer so tremendously under the policies of Barack Obama 3.0, they're trying to pitch it, the ball game as attack Trump. And they're saying it as loudly as they possibly can. It's Paul Begala. I'm there saying it's possible as loudly and Barack Obama saying it's loudly as you possibly can. Like it's all about Trump. This will forever be about Trump. And there's no, there you, we we have nothing left to run on. He's literally saying, "Stop running on your record. You don't have a record. You have nothing." If we can't run against Trump, we have nothing to run on. They're straight up screaming it from the rooftop. The guy that got Joe Biden the nomination in 2020 was a man named James Clyburn, who is a congressman who's as old as, uh, you know, the dinosaur bones first put into the mud. James Clyburn is in his 80s. James Clyburn is the man who swung everything. When, when Joe Biden was losing Going, coming in fifth in Iowa and coming in fourth in New Hampshire, James Clyburn's the guy who like muscled him up to the top of the spot in South Carolina where he controls the entire machine. James Clyburn saying, I'm not worried. I'm very concerned. Watch. How, how worried are you about black voters showing up for President Biden in November? Well, I'm not worried. I'm very concerned. And I have sat down with President Biden. I don't know. I saw those reports. I've also seen at least one report indicating that I have sat down uh, with President Biden, and I did uh, with him. Uh, and I've uh, told him what my concerns are. I have no problem with the Biden administration and what it has done. My problem is that we have not been able to break through uh, that MAGA wall in order to get to people. I'm not upset. I'm very concerned. I'm not worried. I'm very concerned. The, the reason is we have to see how quickly they turn it. MAGA, 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 MAGA. 
they know. They know it's all fake. They know it's all fake. This is a photo of uh, Joe Biden yesterday in South Carolina, James Clyburn's district. No crowd around him, no enthusiasm, no excitement, no one taking photos. An empty restaurant, effectively. An empty restaurant. When was the last time you saw the president go to an empty restaurant? There are these there are these great clips. Maybe we'll play them later in the show. There's great clips of uh, Donald Trump going in to pizza shop, right? We're like, no, you can't fit another human being into the pizza shop because there's so many people that are raging in order to try and get like even close to Donald Trump. Check it out. It's so pathetic. Everything is centrally planned for Democrats. So we're about to talk about Michelle and what they have planned for her. But there was a moment yesterday on the same tour with Joe Biden where he was brought into a black church. He was brought into a church where James Clyburn sits on stage again, like a king. And Joe Biden gets this really easy boom clap, hallelujah, uh, chorus to hum along with whatever drivels out of his mouth, right? You're able to write a speech with certain notes and Joe Biden's able to get like some enthusiastic, some enthusiastic hallelujahs and clapping to go along with his speech. Instead, and this is the simplest layup in all of Democrat retail politics, to go into to go into these churches that are bought and paid for, and are essentially functionaries of the Democrat Party, and get out the vote efforts for the Democrat Party, and to bring in a Democrat politician and to get them a photo op. Okay, this is the easiest layup in politics. What happened when Joe Biden walked in to? the church in South Carolina yesterday. Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he was screamed off the stage is what happened. By who? MAGA Republicans? Remember, they're the enemy. Nope. By Democrats. Watch. Light, there's no path from this darkness. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. It's the easiest layup in all of politics is for a Democrat to go into a church flanked by a bunch of congressional members that have warmed up the audience and just effectively like hand the stage over to guys like Joe Biden. And he gets screamed at. That clip goes on for like three minutes. And then half the congregation leaves. You didn't hear about it on any shows other than ours because it's so unbelievably degrading and humiliating for Joe Biden. He can't even get applause lines inside of churches that are rigged entirely in his favor. This is how bad things are going. For uh, reference, Joe Biden in a, Joe Biden in the black church should be a, um, it's it's its own comedy show. I'd watch it as a skit on Saturday Night Live. This actually looks like a Saturday Night Live skit. Here's the last time that Joe Biden went to a black church. This one's in Atlanta. And Joe Biden tried to sing, clap, and dance along to the Hallelujah Chorus, um, but looked about as awkward as a nun inside of an OnlyFans convention. Joe Biden looking real awkward He's so good at this. This is our nuclear cringe for the day.
What's happening? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like, a stray, like a stray dog caught by the local dog catcher and thrown into the pound. <laughs> it's, it's so fun. He's so, he, Joe Biden's great at this. Really, he's so good. It is no wonder, of course, that you see polls like this now. Uh, former President Donald Trump is leading Joe Biden in several key swing states, including Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Oh, my. And even more voters believe Trump would emerge as a victor in a head-to-head matchup, according to new polls released. The survey asked 6,000 swing state voters, if candidates for the presidential election, who would you vote for? Oh, man. Uh, Donald Trump just cleans house. Donald Trump wins by 350 electoral votes if the election were held today. And that is why they're slamming the panic button. People like Michelle Obama don't like doing interviews. I, I know that seems antithetical uh, to her, the, the basic like aura of these people being such egomaniacs, but, but it takes her away from her beach friends. Doing interviews is annoying. It takes her away from uh, her isolated Democrat private island communities. Her cocktail parties, um, and you know her more lucrative three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars speaker fees to World Economic Forum uh, countries in Europe. Those are the things that Michelle Obama wants to do, along with hanging out on a yacht with Tom Hanks, which she did when affirmative action was struck down, and then tweeting about how oppressed she is. <laughs> uh, note to self: if you know affirmative action is going to be struck down and you personally benefited from affirmative action, and you're on a yacht with Tom Hanks in Greece, uh, probably not the best time to tweet about how oppressed you are. But nonetheless, this is what Michelle Obama likes doing with her spare time. She doesn't like sitting down with YouTubers and doing softball interviews with like these, with like the paid influencers of the left. But that is precisely what she did. And what did she say yesterday? Well, what she said in an interview that dropped yesterday was I am absolutely terrified of Donald Trump. Now, she doesn't have to answer that question, and she doesn't have to answer it like that. Her language is chosen. Specifically, every answer is written down by multiple publicists to demonstrate where Michelle Obama is going and what she is about to do. Watch the clip. The things that yeah. keep me up because you, you don't have control over them mm -hmm. and you wonder where are people, where are we in this? You know, where are our hearts? What's going to happen in this next election? I am terrified about what could possibly happen because our leaders matter, who we select, who speaks for us, who holds that bully pulpit. It affects us in ways that I, sometimes I think people take for granted. Mm. Oh my. Michelle Obama there saying, I'm terrified and you don't realize how powerful the presidency is. That's what she just said. Let me distill it down for you. Distilling this down is exactly what Michelle Obama's biographer has done. So we've talked so we've covered Barack Obama's biographer. Michelle Obama's biographer says, no, 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 you don't understand. They're going to kick Joe Biden out in the spring and they're going to bring in Michelle. And they're going to do this because then all the state's primaries will already be over. And you won't have any Democrat infighting. That was the goal in 2016. That was the, that's what they accomplished in 2020. And it's what they're doing now. They're just being far more malevolent about it. Watch. And I make the case that I believe that Joe Biden is on his way out. I think that's pretty much the consensus. Nobody really believes he'll be the candidate in 2024 because of health, because of corruption, because of his terrible record. And I make the case in my film and book that Michelle has been pretty much copying Barack Obama's path to the White House. Barack had a voter registration organization in Chicago called Project Vote before he ran for president. Michelle founded something called When We All Vote that's supported by the Soros Group for 26 million bucks. She's been running around the country registering people for several years. Barack wrote two autobiographies, Dreams from My Father and The Audacity of Hope. Sure enough, Michelle wrote two autobiographies, Becoming and The Light We Carry. They're also on Netflix as, as TV specials. And of course, Barack was the keynote speaker who introduced John Kerry at the 2004 Democrat Convention. Uh, sure enough, Michelle introduced Joe Biden at the 2020 Democrat Convention. So I think she's positioned herself just like Barack did. 
you know, at what point do you sort of understand that the only thing that mattered to these people, certainly not in their relationship with God, certainly not their relationship with a creator, their religion, their families don't matter at all. Your family certainly don't matter at all. The assumption of power and the uh, permanent control of power is all that matters to the Marxists. Having total end-to-end -end control of the power vectors in this country, of course, makes them kings of the earth and allows them to do with this nation what they will. If there's no accountability and no ability for us to vote them out and they have all the systems wired in their favor, well, then that's the goal. If Donald Trump comes in and smashes that pretty little Christmas present that Karl Marx has wrapped up for him, then that makes them very sad. That makes them pretty miserable. And Joe Biden is creating the environment, a much better environment, in fact, than 2016 for Donald Trump to do exactly that. Tucker Carlson calling it from a mile out, from 30,000 feet up, saying, no, 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 no. This, was, this clip's over a year old. No, 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 you don't understand. Follow the trends. Be, recognize patterns. This is what Michelle is doing. Watch. You might mistake what Michelle Obama is doing right now for the beginnings of a presidential campaign. So first, you have a manufactured white racism panic. That's a clue. But the clincher is menopause. Unlike every other woman over 50 in all human history, Michelle Obama, we're sad to tell you, has menopause. It's not clear where she caught it. Maybe there was an outbreak in Egertown. But it's bad. At one point, Michelle Obama gained up to six pounds. You don't know how much she suffered. Let's put it this way. Baton death march survivors, she laughs at you. You can't fathom her pain. Watch her talk about it on TV. I am still physically active, and my goal now, instead of having Michelle Obama arms, I just want to keep moving. Just keep moving. If I can walk, move, I don't have to run, I don't have to beat everyone. So I've had to change the way I see myself in, the, in, in, in my health space. I never used to weigh myself. I'm not trying to stick to numbers, but when you're in menopause, you have this slow creep. You have this slow creep. And no, she's not talking about Joe Biden here, who is technically one of the slowest creeps in America. She's talking about her own thighs. Now, why is Michelle Obama telling you about her menopausal thighs on a TV show? Possibly because she's a crazed narcissist who thinks her own thighs are interesting to you. And that's, of course, true. But there may be other reasons. <laughs> one of my one of my one of my all time favorites that's in cooperstown baby one of my all time favorite 60 seconds ever to be broadcast but tucker carlson calling it from a year ago these people when you're this rich and this famous you don't want to be on tv that's not your goal you you kind of want to do what the bushes did and just disappear into your wealth and your mansions that's a nice life it's a peaceful life the obamas are not for the peaceful life the Obamas are for power, and it makes them exceedingly dangerous. Somebody who's in much better shape than Michelle Obama, somebody who has Michelle Obama arms? Is that a thing? Is that a term? Yikes. The great Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, hopefully she's still on the program after I said she has Michelle Obama arms. We'll see. Who's on the Oversight and Homeland Security Committees joins the program now. I'm sorry. I realized how insulting that was, Congresswoman, uh, when I said it. And okay. I, I, you know, I I know you work out. I know you could probably kick my ass, uh, <laughs> especially in a CrossFit gym. And so that's it, I meant it as a compliment. Well, thank you, Benny. I really appreciate that. I I can assure you, I don't have Michelle Obama arms, um, but I am strong and healthy and in shape. Uh, in spite of you know, I turned 50 years old this year too. So I was I was really laughing at Tucker's clip there and um, Michelle Obama obviously trying to relate to middle aged women all over America, because, yes, very likely she probably does want to run for president. And the setup is clear and it has been clear to many of us for quite some time. And she stated it herself on that recent interview, <clears throat> excuse me, saying that she believes government uh, does everything for the American people. And you know what? That is the outlook 
the Democrats because they are communist and they want the government to be the solution for everything for Americans, but yet they want Americans to fit the bill. And that's dangerous. So there's a, a trend going around a lot of a lot of whispers that Joe Biden's just going to be Joe Biden's there to survive through the primary season. So that there is no primary for the Democrats and nobody has a chance to like run against Michelle Obama and nobody has a chance to actually run against whoever they've chosen. And that then then you do the switcheroo in the spring. What do you think about that? I think it's very possible. And Joe Biden, uh, his mental state is not well. It's displayed on camera all the time. This is this is something that's unavoidable. They can't cover it, cover it up enough. Um, and they're excited when his meds kick in and he actually has a really good day and it covers <laughs> up his dementia or he doesn't fall down on stage. But it's clear and obvious to everyone that's watching when Jill Biden has to go up there on stage, grab him by the hand and basically drag him off because he's wandering around in a state of dementia, is dazed and confused. And they can't cover this up. It's it's going to get worse and it continues to get worse. And we hear some very bad rumors out of the White House about his condition. Um, another thing is, is they can't get past his policies. But here's the deal, Benny. Here's what everyone needs to understand. And I'm going to give this kind of like marching orders. No matter who runs for president, if they replace him, whether it's Michelle Obama or, or, or someone else, and, and, and I don't know who that would be, their policies are all the same because this is Obama's third term and all the people working in the White House in the Biden administration are the same people that were in the Obama White House. So if it's Michelle Obama, she owns Joe Biden's policies. She owns the Biden administration. She owns the failure. She owns the Green New Deal. She owns the inflation. She owns the wide open border. There will be no difference. As a matter of fact, if Michelle Obama runs for president and replaces Joe Biden, I will argue that everything we've seen for the past few years under a Joe Biden pre presidency will be far worse under a Michelle Obama presidency because that's exactly what they want. That has been the plan the entire time. So I'll tell everyone watching this show right now, if this is, this is the plan and this is what's going to happen, you know exactly what to do. You tie Michelle Obama to every single thing the Biden administration has done because it is the Obama's third administration. So Alex Jones in a recent interview said that uh, Joe Biden is caught was caught naked at the White House, wandering around 2 a.m., doesn't know where he is, doesn't know who he is. You work in Washington, D.C. You're on committees with access to classified information and a lot of knowledge. You're a very well-known member of Congress. Have you ever heard anything like this? Well, I, I can't get into specifics, but I've heard very bad rumors as well. And I'm, I can't tell, tell you who told me that and where that came from. But we've heard terrible things. And like I said, the evidence of that has Can been- Can you give us some of them? You, like what kind, what kind of terrible thing? Well, I would say that what Alex Jones uh, told his viewers is not far off. And um, that's, that's a terrifying and unfortunate situation. Um, but I'll go a step further. We, we saw Joe Biden on a trip um, uh, in a foreign country. I believe it was last year or perhaps maybe it was 2021. And he fell down and definitely had an accident. And that that was hard for them to cover up. Um, but these this is the reality of people in their 80s or late stage in life, especially when they suffer from conditions like late stage dementia um, or Alzheimer's. Uh, this is this is where people's faculties fail. And it's not uncommon. Uh, but unfortunately, Joe Biden is having it happen to him. Uh, literally while he is being president of the United States. And this is another reason why I think we'll see them take Joe Biden uh, and replace him with someone like Michelle Obama. So you're saying that Joe Biden fell and soiled himself on a trip abroad. That's what I heard happened to him. And that's, that's what many other people were told as well. There's been a lot of reports of him letting out a long, loud fart in the presence of the King and um, Queen of England. Uh, and, and that come, came, comes directly from the royal family. So, you know, I guess maybe this is Joe Biden showing us uh, renewable gas and, um, you know, how valuable uh, 
going green energy can be. Uh, nonetheless, this is a terrifying uh, prospect, and it's terrifying to the elites. It's terrifying, I guess, to us. A lot of elites are terrified. Now you're tweeting about Epstein Island. They don't want you to do that. They don't want you to uh, to tweet about this, Congresswoman, because, well, you have the right to actually tell the FBI, right? You have oversight, correct? Like, art your Article 1, the executive branch's Article 2, if the FBI has all of these tapes, which you've tweeted about, and all of this evidence of rape and human trafficking, I mean, couldn't presumably Congress force the FBI's hand to give up that information? Couldn't you create a, a private skiff where you could have access to what they know happened on Jeffrey Epstein's island, which we know was wired like a Christmas tree with video cameras and with photos, 20,000 CDs, 20,000 hard drives? Uh, that were taken from the island by our intelligence agencies. Why don't you have access? Do you have access to that? And why don't you? If you don't, why not? Well, Benny, I absolutely agree that we should have access to it. And I have a planned meeting this week um, with with Chairman Comer of the Oversight Committee because I'm going to start demanding that. And I believe that if the FBI has evidence that covers up the rape and child abuse of minors um, uh, associated with Jeffrey Epstein, whether it was on his island, whether it was in New York, whether it was on any of his properties on his airplane, and the FBI is holding that evidence, then the American people deserve to know about it and there should be people going to jail. I don't care how powerful they are. I don't care who they are. I do not care anything about that. And the FBI would be completely complicit with these crimes if they've been hiding this information. But let's also take a step back and, and remind everyone, we have not had a very good uh, uh, relationship with the FBI, uh, this Congress. Uh, I, serve in, I serve on the Oversight Committee, and we had subpoenaed the FD-1023 form that gave uh, intel and information of bribery uh, against Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, uh, in the form of $5 million payments coming from the Ukrainian oligarch that owns Burisma. And Christopher Ray did not want to give us that form and withheld that form. And as a matter of fact, went so far as forcing us in order to be able to see it, we had to go read it in a skiff. Yet this form is a completely unclassified form and we should have never been able to have to go in a skiff and read it. As a matter of fact, the American people, anyone should have been able to hold it in their hand and read it because it's unclassified. So I, I would expect a um, very difficult time working with the FBI to get the, the information, the files, the photos, um, all, of, all of the information they have on Jeffrey Epstein and the people that he collected and the FBI collected intel on for years and years as they used him as an intelligent asset um, spying on rich and powerful people all over the world, uh, especially people in the United States, uh, very powerful people. And, but I believe this is something that we cannot allow to fall through the cracks um, so I look forward to uh, working with Chairman Comer and my oversight committee uh, and people in my conference to move forward, do everything we can to get our hands on that information. Yeah, I mean, Marsha Blackburn's being stopped in the Senate, but the Republicans don't control the Senate, right? So Dick Durbin, big friend of Bill Clinton, is stopping the flight logs from coming out. Couldn't you presumably subpoena yes. the flight logs? Yes, we could, Benny. And, and I'll tell you, I have a great frustration with my conference because remember, we told everyone across the country when we took the majority that we had the power of the purse. And we absolutely do have the power of the purse, no matter how slim our majority is. But the problem is, is we don't have the willpower here in Congress. Republicans don't have the willpower to make the necessary steps in order to force the Biden administration, the FBI and the Department of Justice into compliance. Now, if I had it my way, I would say you want one single penny from the House of Representatives, then you're going to have to hand over these files. Um, I would go further, Benny. I would tell them you're going to have to secure our southern border, too, and stop the weaponized government that's prosecuting Joe Biden's top political opponent, uh, Trump supporters all over the country, pro-life protesters, parents, Catholics, and, and the list goes on and on. But again, I'll tell you, I have a great frustration with many of my colleagues in my Republican conference because they seem to uh, not understand what the power of the purse means. 
and they're not working for the people that sent them here to Washington, because I guarantee you every time they go home, I bet you they get an earful about January 6th defendants and about Jack Smith and about the weaponized government and about the wide open southern border that's brought 10 million people over our border. And yes, they definitely want their Republican representative to withhold money from the Department of Justice, the FBI, um, and, and maybe the entire administration in order to hand over the Jeffrey Epstein rape and child abuse files, pictures, and, and evidence that the FBI has been holding on to for years. And that isn't a, a state secret. That is not going to protect the national security of the United States. Stopping the invasion at our southern border protects the national security interests of the United States. Stopping a communist administration with their weaponized government protects the national security interests of the United States. And locking up powerful, rich, elite pedophiles protects the national security interest of Americans here in the United States, Benny. So if I had my way and I could run things differently here in Congress, I can assure you those would be many of the steps I would be taking. Incredible. And and we kind of, I mean, on this show, I know this audience wishes that you did run Congress. I didn't see your name on the ballot for speaker, but you'd have my vote, Marjorie. Uh, <laughs> we, we are hopefully going to see then I mean, are you alluding to a subpoena for the Epstein files? This seems to be something that many people in our audience really care about. Like, wow, there are the elite predator ring that we've been told runs our government actually does run our government. Oh, wow. It's confirmed. Bill Clinton likes him young. OK, that's directly from Jeffrey Epstein's mouth right before he tried to plead for leniency in his charges by giving up Clinton. Clinton was the big fish he was going to give up. But so now Republicans are in charge of Congress, have oversight over Article 2, and so you could ask for any of the Epstein documents that you want, but Republicans won't, so are Republicans protecting Bill Clinton? Well, I think we could definitely phrase it that way, but I'm going to do everything I can this week in my meetings, and I feel like I will have a percentage of my conference in agreement with me that this mm -hmm. is what we definitely should do. Um, it's just a matter of how much willpower they have and how willing, how, how hard they're willing to push for it. And that's where I, I really get frustrated with many of my mm. colleagues is they don't seem to want to have the spine to do what it takes to force the administration or the FBI to hand over information that they definitely should hand over to the American people. But I believe this is absolutely the right thing to do. It's something that we must do. And remember, uh, they called many of us conspiracy theorists for years for talking about Jeffrey Epstein, talking about things like Pizzagate, talking about pedophiles here in that work in our government that, that may be big donors uh, to politicians, um, uh, powerful people all over the world. They called us conspiracy theorists for pointing out the pedophilia and saying that it's happening. Well, you know something, Benny, it's not a conspiracy theorist. It's just a matter of time before it always gets proven true. And this one has been proven true. And many of us knew that Bill Clinton was on the flight log for Lolita Express. We were calling that out years ago. And I think I think the brave independent journalists that were posting about that and trying to inform everyone, people like Alex Jones, people like Mike Cernovich, people like yourself, many others were talking about it and being brave enough to talk about it. Um, even while the mainstream media, they had the information too, but they hid it and they sat on it. And to me, that, that makes them uh, not only irresponsible, that makes them definitely complicit in these actions. Um, you can't sit by while minors are being raped and abused by the most powerful people in our country and arguably in the world and, and, then, and, and think that that's okay and think that, oh, they're the good people in the media or these are the good people in the FBI because they're not being the good people. They, they are picking and choosing who they prosecute and who they don't prosecute. And we know right now, Benny, the people they choose to prosecute are MAGA grandmas and veterans that walked in the Capitol on January 6th. And now Matthew Graves himself, the U.S. attorney that prosecutes them, has stated that he is going after people that were on the outside of the Capitol and crossed over the barrier line that they had set up when that barrier had been torn down by people like Ray Epps and others that he told to tear it down, provocateurs, federal agents, Antifa, uh, and many others that were there acting uh, against our government and against 
President Trump and against the very people that were innocently in Washington on January 6th, supporting free and fair elections and supporting our efforts to object in Congress and supporting President Trump. So I think it's our responsibility in this day and time, Benny, to hold our government accountable. accountable and I'm telling you, I'm doing everything I possibly can. And I don't care who gets mad at me here in Washington. Wow. Well, again, please run for speaker. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people disappointed. One of them is your colleague, Tim Burchett, who made quite a bit of uh, news on our show saying that the reason why there's no Epstein logs and there's no Epstein information out is because there's active blackmail operations against members of Congress. Have you ever seen anything like this? Have you ever been a part of anything like this? You know, I, I have not. Um, I'm kind of one of those boring people in Washington. I go to bed early at night. I don't go to the cocktail parties or any of the parties or receptions. I don't get invited to those things uh, in the evenings or maybe in the daytime. I don't know when they do this stuff. So I can tell you I've never witnessed any of it. I've, I've never been blackmailed. Um, they don't have anything on me. And so I don't know anything about those things. But we have seen in the news um, evidence of, of brothels where we're told uh, high powered, um, very powerful and elected officials uh, were frequent customers there. So I would argue someone's got information on them. And we know a lot of people here that have bad voting records. So it wouldn't surprise me one single bit if they're afraid to go against uh, the machine, so to speak, um, because they're afraid of information like that coming out. Uh, so, Benny, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me, but I can tell you I've never seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. It does stand. to re I mean, you can just see it kind of in the evidence. Right. So there's a brothel that was busted. You just mentioned that there mm -hmm. are multiple there are multiple sex videos being filmed in both chambers uh, yeah. in Congress that have ongoing criminal police investigations into the sex videos being filmed in Congress, like in hearing rooms and throughout the House and the Senate. So that's happening. And then you have a member that is in good standing right now uh, in the house who slept with the Chinese spy. So That's right. how do you say that it doesn't happen? Like, how can you possibly argue that this isn't happening? I don't think anyone can argue that it's not happening. As a matter of fact, like you listed, the evidence is out there uh, plain as day for everyone to see. And it also shows you how repulsive and how uh, bad the moral decline is not only across our country, but right here in the halls of Congress and in our government. Uh, it, it disgusts me, uh, Benny. It really does. And I, I honestly think that we need to do so much better. Uh, we need to be setting a standard here in Washington. And tragically, the, the standard that is being set is one of blackmail, uh, sexual perversion, uh, uh, places where people are doing all kinds of horrific things. And it, it not only does it sadden me, it makes me sick and it makes me angry because we should we should be the standard bearer for the entire country. And Washington, D.C. is not the standard bearer. As a matter of fact, it's it's a cause of, of the moral decline, I think, in America. Final question for you, because this is really uh, this is going to come to a head in about 24 hours. Hunter Biden uh, vote for contempt. Here's your tweet this morning on it. Uh, holding Hunter Biden in contempt, you will vote uh, to hold him in contempt. Hunter will be held accountable. Will he, Congresswoman, I suppose is my question. Well, we are trying to hold him accountable. I, I serve on three committees, and my committees are extremely busy uh, this week. We have Dr. Anthony Fauci. We are doing um, interviews with him, a closed-door uh, transcribed deposition that started yesterday, and we're doing that today. But tomorrow on my oversight committee, we will be marking up and voting to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress. And we are doing that because he completely violated his subpoena. Now, here's my expectations. I expect the Department of Justice to prosecute him once we hold him in contempt of Congress in the exact same manner that they prosecuted Steve Bannon in the exact same manner that they went after Peter Navarro. Now, the question is, do we expect Joe Biden's uh, lackey, Merrick Garland, and the Department of Justice to prosecute Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, for completely disobeying his congressional subpoena? And I think we all know the answer there. Um, but it still must be done. We must do the right thing as, as much as possible and whatever power that we have. 
Uh, the third thing that I'll add on that's happening this week that it's important for people to watch, and I worked very hard to force this to happen, is we begin our hearings on the Homeland Committee. That's another committee I serve on to impeach Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. And Benny, if you remember, I forced a vote on the House floor before Christmas on impeaching Mayorkas, and eight of my Republican colleagues voted with the Democrats to protect his job. Well, I've been promised uh, from Speaker Mike Johnson and our Chairman Mark Green that we will be moving forward with impeaching Mayorkas this month. Um, and my understanding is, is that we should be gathering the votes to be able to make that happen uh, once we move it through our Homeland Committee. Well, that would be really refreshing to see. It'd be very refreshing to see some level of accountability. Um, yeah, I agree. It would yeah. be refreshing to see anything. And and I I'm I share probably you and your viewers' opinions. I am really disappointed uh, here in Washington, uh, and we should be doing more with our Republican majority. Yeah, hopefully this is a uh, an awakening moment, right, for us that there has only been one party in Washington D.C. and has always acted against the interests of Americans and in the interests of foreign nations and anyone antithetical to the American dream and to making America great again. And so, wow, now is the time to wake up. If you don't wake up from this, I don't know. I don't know what else. I don't know what else to do. I mean, quite frankly, I'm a little worried. So we're praying a lot these days, Marjorie. Good. Chandler, and we we're praying. Always we're praying for you. Praying. Yeah. Thank you. We're, Thank you, Benny. We're, we're praying for you. You are one of the fighters. Godspeed. Get those Epstein documents. Uh, they get the Mann Act violations against Hunter Biden. Um, yes. And and God and truly, truly Godspeed in your in your crusade against a very, very evil, dark and demonic place uh, that you are unfortunately have to work in. Thank you, Benny. And I'll keep you updated on on how it goes moving forward with Jeffrey Epstein files. So thanks yes. so much for that. Yes, please. Godspeed, Marjorie. Thank you. So Marjorie Taylor Green, Congresswoman, breaking some news there that one, uh, hopefully we will be able to see some action on the House, which has every right to subpoena the Jeffrey Epstein documents and the tapes and the footage and the CDs and all the hard drives. I mean, right? Like Republicans can do that. Why not? There are multiple committees actually that could do that. Why not? Why not set up your own January 6th committee for this? Like the American people would cheer then number two, Joe Biden wears depends because he craps himself. Apparently. Apparently the oops, I crap my pants uh, meme. Can we grab that meme? Let's grab that meme. Apparently the, the oops, I crap my pants uh, Joe Biden meme that we've created is actually uh, not a meme at, at all, but a 100% accurate um, documentary on Joe Biden's life. Guys, grab me that meme. Let's go. I, I want, I want, I was like, I was like, ah, let's let, uh, ah, no, 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 we gotta get it. We gotta get it. Let's get the, let's get the oops, I crap my pants meme from Joe Biden. We've created this, uh, in the past and it is totally prescient and I cannot believe, um, I can't believe, I mean, it seems like Marjorie Taylor, seems like Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, knows a lot more that she was just giving us, that she was just giving us this little, this little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of a little bit. And we'll play you that meme in just a moment. Uh, Fanny, big Fanny Willis, has been accused of hiring her little bit, her little slam piece, in a romantic relationship to prosecute Donald Trump and has paid him nearly a million dollars for his prominent role. Bombshell court documents claim. Fulton County District Attorney Fanny Willis has been accused of hiring a private lawyer that she had a romantic relationship with to prosecute Donald Trump, according to a stunning filing by the former president's co-defendants. The bombshell allegations are included uh, in a filing by Michael Roman, former Trump campaign official, who's been taking part of the fake electro scheme. The public court filing, which seeks the dismissal of the charges against him, alleges that Willis has a personal relationship with a private lawyer, Nathaniel Wade, who has paid more than $600,000 a special pro effort to prosecute Donald Trump. And this man also met with the White House for eight hours before the prosecution, which would allege that the Joe Biden White House was directing this man and was ordering this prosecution of their foremost political opponent. What a sunken time. What a sunken time that we live in. And we're not even talking about Joe Biden crapping his pants. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the Fannie, big Fannie Willis news. 
sex scandal is rocking President Trump's case in Georgia. The Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney, Fannie Willis, has been accused of appointing her lover as a special prosecutor in the case against Donald Trump. DA Fannie Willis is responsible for taking Trump's mugshot, also allegedly financially benefited from hiring her lover, Nathan Wade, on that Trump case. This is according to a motion that was just filed by Wade, the co-defendant. Now, who is this romantic partner who Fannie Willis hired? He was just a private attorney who's never even tried a felony case. Even the Times says he has, quote, limited experience trying high-profile cases. But get this. Fannie's alleged lover has been paid nearly a million dollars in legal fees already. Who authorized the payments? Oh, that would be Fannie. Where'd she get the money? Oh, that's your money. Came from the taxpayers. They've allegedly gone on luxury vacations to Napa Valley, even taking Caribbean cruises. And Fannie isn't even denying that she's hired a guy she's sleeping with to prosecute Trump. The truth shall set you free, ladies and gentlemen. All you need is to live on a long enough timeline and you will see justice in your life or in the next. Maybe Bill Clinton won't get charged for what he did on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Maybe we live in a sunken place. Maybe he will. Ladies and gentlemen, we're hearing right now that Ray Epps is going to avoid a prison sentence, of course, because of course, because of course. There's no justice in the fallen world, okay? That, that story is breaking right now. There's no justice in the fallen world. We live in a fallen world. It is the way that it is. But there will be justice. And even in this life, you can see justice like this. With Fannie Willis collapsing, with Joe Biden collapsing, crapping his pants, with the regime, these evil regimes collapsing, with the atheistic, oppressive, evil empire of the Soviet Union collapsing in our lifetimes, in my lifetime, I was born in 1986. These are like really triumphant moments when we are able to witness justice in our life. Hillary Clinton losing in 2016 is a great example of this. These are wonderful things. So set your hearts on God, uh, set your minds on the scriptures and ensure and live in the knowledge that we will have justice in this life or the next. Our verse of the day, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. The devil wants us to be demoralized, wants us to have no energy, and wants us to be unable to fight. Stay armed. Put on the full armor of God. And remember, Jesus Christ has our backs. Ladies and gentlemen, we will close out today with a meme that was created. Uh, that kind of locks in very perfectly with the breaking news from this show. According to a member of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who knows a lot of things about a lot of things, um, Joe Biden had an adult accident. Um, and boy, we just happen to have the perfect uh, meme for that. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benny Johnson. See ya. What do you say to a game of tennis? Come on, Grandma. <laughs> okay, I'll get my racket. Um, on second thought... I think I better sit this one out. You crapped your pants again, didn't you? I just don't feel confident. Look at this, Jack. Here we are. It's oops, I crapped my pants. You see, it's got a big pad. Unlike my DOJ, these don't leak. How do you know so much about oops, I crapped my pants? I'm wearing them, and I just did. <laughs>